One of my first bosses in corporate America, she was also a kid of immigrants, and she was telling me, you know, I was lucky that I was born in America, you know? And you only can make it in America if you really, really, really take, you know, the bull by the horns, and then you, you, you action, you take action on it, you know? So I thought about it, and, and I think that you and I, we follow the same people, you know, Gary, Grant, you know, everybody else. So then I, I heard Gary one time saying, you know, the day that you realize that everything is your fault, your life will change. Mm. And I was like, oh, why he means like that? And then- I'm I, getting chills, because that's so good. Yeah. It's so good. And, and then I realized- Pay attention to this, guys. I'm telling you, this is cold. And then I realized, you know, the fact that I didn't sell one policy right now is my fault. Mm. The fact that I didn't uh, push hard enough is my fault. The fact that the customer left me and he went somewhere else is because I didn't provide something that they were needed. Mm. So it's my fault. The fact that an employee left me, that means that it's my fault. Yes. Everything is my fault because this is my company. So the one that is running the ship is me, right? Yes. So at the end of the day, it's everything my fault. So I have to put systems in place, right? I think that that's what you were driving to, right? Yes. I have to put systems in place so then I don't get surprised by the consequence of situations. Hey, we got a special interview today with the Medicare legend, Miss Tatiana Torres. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Cody. All the way from Jersey to the big city of Springfield, I Missouri. Know. Isn't that great? Oh, it's amazing. Thank you for it. being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm very grateful. What you've done um, is pretty remarkable. For those that don't know Tatiana and everything that you're doing uh, up in Jersey, share uh, how long you've been in the business and, and what you've accomplished. I've been in the business for six years, um, and when I started, I didn't have no clue what Medicare was or how you sell it. Mm -hmm. I never sold Medicare before, and it just seemed like a good way out, if you want to call it. You know, I come from corporate America. I did 16 years in corporate. Wow. Wall Street. That's very know. different from what you're doing now. Oh, yes. So, very. Okay, so I want to stop you, because when you say Wall Street... Okay, are we talking like we're the wolf of Wall Street? Or like what, what What were you doing on Wall Street? <laughs> well, I was doing a lot of employee benefits and okay. I was doing a lot of accounts. And the advantage of New York City is that you have one big building here, the next building next door and the next building. We are so many people nice. cramped up in one little area. Uh, so employee benefits at that time, if you think about maybe seven, eight years ago, that's what when Mr. Obama decided, well, if you want to sign up your employees for a plan and they don't understand the language, then you have somebody that has to speak Spanish to them. Uh. I believe, well, obviously. And you have to have somebody that speaks the language and explains the plans, and you have to give them different options. And you, New York City is one of the few cities left with a lot of union, union plans. So there, there's many union plans there left, like the carpenters, the plumbers, yeah. you know, the MTA workers, the subway guys, you know. So you went door to door selling employee benefits? I used to knock on the door of the brokers. Wow. So I used to make connections with brokers. You gotta be a good salesperson and good with people to connect with a Wall Street broker like you have to right yes. there cold right you have to and you have to find out that point that they're looking for how much money they're trying to make here yes. do they want five percent do they want seven percent do they want six percent how much do they want and then you have to be willing to compromise because at the end of the day it's better to have uh, three or four percent of something and you're talking about maybe five thousand or ten thousand lives you know that having zero of anything because nobody's willing to give you anything for nothing right you know? You have to be willing to give something. So then you transitioned into insurance yes. six years ago. Yes. Have you always sold Medicare the whole time? No. It was my first time. Well, the six years has been all Medicare. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which, which in a way, that's kind of how I met you because I realized, you know, Tatiana is doing Medicare only and that's been good. But what else is out there? You know, mm -hmm. why I only have one product? I should have more products. You know, what happened yeah. with life insurance? What happened with... And at that time, I didn't know how to sell Medicare. So I was kind of focused on learning that craft and being good at, you know, what yes. I wanted to do and... And I didn't think too much of it, but then, in a way, it became a clutch, you know? And you've done very well, by the way. Would you say more Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement? I do both, but I okay. live in a very condensed Medicare Advantage area because there's a lot of uh, Latinos. And you have a lot, a lot of Medicare Advantage for Latinos? Yes, 
Yes, it is sad, but many of the people that they come to this country, they're first generation. So then they work in a factory, they work wow. cleaning. You know, they have uh, they have a very very hard time. You know, working for many hours. You know, I mean, yes. you've seen it. They they work in construction sometimes, yeah. and sometimes they are not all paid in the books. They pay portion cash, portion books. So then they didn't accumulate a lot, enough in social security. So when they want to retire, they realize they only have $800, you oh know, or $900. Right. And what they're going to do with that money, you know? So then trying to sell a plan G at 150 something dollars, right. um, plus a Part D Medicare, plus dental and vision, you're talking, and pl plus Part B, you're talking about good yeah. $400 a month when somebody makes only 800 Wow, you that's know, tough. It's very tough. Did, and, and how many clients have you sold, or how many clients have you sold the last six years, or what kind of bu book do you manage? I closed uh, last year at 984, 984 uh, clients. 984 clients, yep. Yep. nice. So far, we have 71 on the books as per last month. So 71 they, new ones? Yep, new ones. Well, last month? Yeah. You wrote 71 Medicare plans last month. Uh, no, from January to now. Oh, good. Yeah. That's awesome, though. That's yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I didn't know that the average salesperson in Medicare sells only 100 pounds a year. For me, that's crazy. If that. Yeah, if that. It's true, by the way. That's okay. crazy. If that, which well, is nuts. And yeah. you're going to sell probably 300? Yeah, that's normally my average. I do between yeah. 350 and 400, you know, that's a kind of, yeah, a year. That's awesome. That's How to sell 350 to 400 a year. <laughs> that's strong. And what kind of... Uh, but I want to sell 1,000. A year? Uh, a year, yeah. How would you do that? Well, I realized, thanks to you again, you know, I need a team of people. I need to grow in a different way. You know, it's yeah. good. I was I was lucky enough to go to the event that you and I, we, we connected, That's right. right? That's right. Uh, Justin's event, yes, right? Yes, that was awesome. Yes. Yeah. That was awesome. If you didn't go there, you should go. Um, kudos to Justin. He did a great event. No doubt. Events are hard. People don't realize how tough events are to pull off, by the way. It's yeah. It is hard, but for the visitor like me, right, it's, it's just all about the connection, the fact that you feel that you are not alone. You are not yes. the only one with the same issue. Yes. Because in my house, nobody, I mean, in my family, nobody sells Medicare. Nobody mm. sells insurance, you know. So when I tell them, I cannot come to them and say, you know, look, this is what happened with this client. That, that thing doesn't, I don't have that support. So when I go to events, for me, that's the beauty of it. Finding mm -hmm. other people that they have kind of the same issue. What do that's you right. do with this? Stuff like that, you know. So um, the goal now this year, uh, thanks to you and, and your dad and Dallas, uh, is to grow and then have at least 20 agents by the end of the year. Boom. I love it. You heard it here first. We're going to look back and that's going to be a reality, by the way. Yes. Uh, how it, much, how much, happen. How much money did you earn uh, you were, I want you to share whatever you're comfortable sharing, but you were sharing some numbers this morning yes. that were really cool when you yeah. were talking to the team. Yeah. I already passed a half a million, which for many people is like, wow. Half you know. a million bucks! But, you know, believe it or not, it's just, I mean, it's going to sound, you know, like a little bit conceited in a way, but... It's not. Once you get to know Tatiana, she is the last thing from conceited and arrogant. <laughs> Crazy, humble. She's driven though, right? Yes, I think I'm, it, it, I'm very she's driven. Down, I think you like like a lot of people. I think we have this in common. For me, it's like I always wanted to be a millionaire before I was thirty. Yeah. Right? I'm thirty. We do. We're gonna do thirteen million bucks plus this year. See? Right? I'm not. If it was about the money, I would stop and slow down. It's really I was about say the that. journey. Yes, I was going to say, it's not too much about the money per se. It's just what you can no. do with that money, right. how many people you can help. You know, it's very different if you talk about making 100000 making half a million, making a million. Yes. So if you are making that impact, even in your employees, you know, the yeah. fact that you can pay good salary to somebody and that person can support their families with the money that you make, thanks of the good decisions that you make in your business. I think that that's very powerful. I, I like that. You've noticed, at well, what point did you notice that you need people to start to scale this thing, to start to really grow what you're doing? When I got to 300 clients uh, and then I realized I'm working like a dog yeah. and then this cannot continue like that. I have a family, I have a five-year-old. Do you feel like you've capped without people? You've kind of capped down what you're capable of doing? I would say that the day is only 24 hours, you know, yeah. out of that day is good for me. I noticed that I don't work very well with less than six hours of sleep. So mm. I, I need to have at least six hours. Right. I also need to work out every day, at least 20 minutes, yes. you know, uh, my body needs to move for me to actually work. That's right. I you should know, have my, had you join my workout this morning. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw the jumping jacks. Yes, I saw it. I was going to take my shoes off and then start jumping jacks. That's so awesome. um, I, I noticed that me personally, that's just me. I understand that not everybody 
wants to do that, but, but, but I need to drink water, you know, I need yes. to exercise 20 minutes a day, I need to sleep at least six hours, and then that all cuts into the 24 hours, you know, and mm-hmm. I also have a family and a young family, a five-year-old, uh, and I want to spend time with a five-year-old, yes. you know, so then if, if I want to get to the 1,000 policies that I want to have a year, yeah. I would have to be working more, and, and the idea, I think, that is working smarter, not necessarily harder. I like that. That's right. And it's good to share what you know. Like, we that we are in the insurance industry, we would think that everybody knows about insurance, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, at least that's what my preconceived idea that yes. how come not people, I, I mean, I'm not from here, you know, so let's get, you know, obviously have an accent. Uh, I was born in Peru, so... When I came here when I was 21, the first thing that crossed my mind is just becoming corporate America because that's what you see. And I came to New York, so then I saw in the movies people, you know, (laughs) briefcase, you know, suits, and and that was my idea of making it here in America. What age did you move? At 21. From Peru to New York? Yes. And did you think when you were moving, did you have dreams to to kind of be where you're at today? or or, Because when you were in Peru... You were probably making a lot less money oh, than yeah. you're making today. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy to believe that what it was good money for me in Peru yeah. here was going to last me maybe a day or two. You know, that was a big wow. um, belief that I had to break. Were you always this driven? Did you always like, were you always like this entrepreneurial spirit or did it come alive when you came here or it was always there? You didn't know what to do with it. I always, I always was considered the black sheep of my family. Like people didn't know what to do with me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like we don't understand where this girl gets these ideas. We you don't understand. Tons of energy too. Yeah. I, and I used to be more hyper than now, you know, like wow. I, I, I remember my first job here in America, I had a meeting with the HR people and they said, you have to bring it down. You know, like wow. you have a lot of energy. We understand that. You have all these ideas, but and it was a very corporate America. They tried to scale you back. Yes, because they said that it was not good for the corporation. Mm. Too loud, too girl. You know, it's, it's sad, isn't it? How crazy that is. But the insurance industry is is mainly a men oriented industry. Yes, so, yes. and I'm not a person that I'm quiet in a corner either. Mm. You know, so I I'm, I can imagine those people having a 21 year older in their office, yeah. jumping off the wall saying, we should do this and we should do that and we should do this. And, and you know, I want to work 10 hours one day. Tomorrow, give me 14 hours. You know, and they were like, what What the hell is she smoking? You know, I mean, <laughs> where is she coming from? You know, who, which planet are you coming from? You know, yeah. so here I felt free to be that person. In Peru was more, you have to walk this path because that's what yeah. a woman should do, you know? A woman should dream to have a husband and mm. be a homemaker and, and, you know, and cook and yes. and do the dishes. And I was like, but no. I got bigger dreams than that. Yeah, that's not my yeah. future, man. If yeah. that's what it means to be here, I don't want to be here. We'll so go back. Yeah, yeah, I was like, a, gee, So you, know. you probably loved the morning meeting here then because oh, you yes. were able to be yourself. Yes. We've got a lot of people that are loud and fun. And uh, so for those that haven't been here, what was your experience of... The first hour being here and being a part of some of our morning meetings and trainings. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Like I think that I mentioned it also in the meeting. It's different to see it in a YouTube video, right? Yes. It's very different to 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 see it and then think that might be true, but I don't think that it's true. Maybe it's just doing it because they're filming it, you know. Uh, but I can tell you guys, it's real. It's all real. He's not lying. He's just the same way. Here inside, you know, in, in, in the meeting or in, in video, uh, it, it's very refreshing to see that you have a good team. Thank you know, you. you have a good team that is out there to kill it, you know, yep. and I like that. I like the, the energy, Appreciate that. the energy that they put in and, and, and the desire that they have yes. to keep moving forward. I think that that's important, you know, that the fire in the belly, you know, that, that everybody talks about, but they don't know how to describe it. Yes. I think that that's um unusual, you know? Yep. Um, it was fun to hear you speak to the team this morning too and share some of your thoughts um, because, I mean, most people don't realize how much you really need. Like you talked about how we have an amazing team. Well, it wasn't always like that. I mean, literally sure. three years and probably, I'll get close, eight months ago, mm-hmm. probably, uh, what's that, 44 months ago, no team. Wow. Just me. Zero people. 
Wow. Now we've got over a hundred between That's all the companies. That's amazing that you accomplish all that in such a Thanks. short period of time. Anybody can, though, right? Yeah. So that's what that's what the hope is. Right? Well, that's what I'm, I'm. I'm kind of relying on you guys, you, your dad, yeah. Dallas. You know, um, I, I I think that you mentioned it before too. You know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We just want to follow the path. You know, and and you guys have a system. And, and I do believe that that's the system that I should go. I try myself, you know, like going back to the question that you asked me, it gets to a point that you want to work six, eight hours, 10 hours, but you also want to unplug. That's right. It's, it's just healthy for your brain to unplug for one, two weeks and be with your family or do whatever, whatever stuff you want to do with your wife or, right. you know, just something that can re-energize you and, yes. and, and feel hungry again for, oh, I want to do my next sale. You know, I want to make it. I want to sell it. Uh, and I think that that's important. That small little break in between. Yes. And for that, you need a team to support it. Nobody became a millionaire by themselves. Mm -mm. There's no even one person. That's a really good point. Actually, that's a really good point. Most people don't stop and think about the fact that, that they like because you talked about in the morning meeting going from half a million now, which is which is amazing, by the way. Thank you. Okay, but it's nowhere near where you can go no. either. But to go from half a million to 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 the goal is now a million bucks. Either. Yes, and then I met another person that you know because I'm in the plan of recruiting now, you know, and I talked to her because I always ask the same question: How much money do you want to make next year? Mm. And she told me seven million. So I was like, a, Oh, wow. shoot. I'm picking too small. That's another level. <laughs> this yeah. bitch. Sorry, I'm sorry for the courtesy. But this girl wants to make seven million dollars. Yes. And here I am, me thinking about one million dollar. Yeah. Chuck, chuck, chuck. Exactly. What does that do? For those that are out there watching, they may think, well, well, that's just one person, right? But for people like us, and a lot of you guys are wired this way that are watching, by the way. People like us that are wired that way, when we hear that, mm -hmm. it... That, that's why I love events and the power of events, mm -hmm. 8% Nation, all the retreats, all the workshops, all the stuff we're doing. Because what happens is you get around big time people like that sure. and it freaking wakes you up. It's yep. crazy what it can do. And so for, for us, it's actually motivating. Some, yep. some people would hear a chick say, I want to make $7 million and they would get demotivated. No, why? For us, it's incredibly yes. motivating, right? It's not a jealousy factor. No. It's, a, it's a factor that we have confidence in ourselves. Yes. And if they can do it, yes. I can too. Yes. I think that's the real message. If she confident enough to think that she can get to the seven million, that's right. Good for her, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, shame on me that I was thinking right. too small. That's right. You know, she wants to go to seven million. Let's let's do it together. Yes. You know, I, I believe that the insurance is one of the industries that you know we are lucky that there is enough people here for right. everybody, and that's we're right. not enough agents. I I heard an statistic before that they say that for every um, uh, senior, you know, you need like ten seniors for one. A day, you know, so every 10 seniors, it might be half of an agent. So then you need 20 seniors. So then that means that I can really technically sell 20 policies a day. Wow. Each one of us. Mm. You know what I mean? So then that means that if I only sell one policy, I was showing 19. That's good. It's not something. Yeah. I was like, so then, because many people will say, but there's too many of us, you know, like as you say in the events, oh, I'm getting a lot of competition. It wasn't like this before. And I said, I can tell that you have not been in another industry. You know, That's have right. you ever been in a car salesman dealership? Yes. They are cut through right there. That's right. Have you been in a lawyer's office? Yeah. That's cut through right there. That's right. We're not that many. No. You mentioned something this morning in our sales meeting that made me think too. This the same thing that Brian Tracy and Les Brown had said mm. in the past that you said. I think it's very applicable. I'd love for you to share it. Oh, that is all my fault. That's right. Yes, it's all my fault. Talk about that. Because for those out there, because I talk a lot about accepting responsibility. Mm -hmm. The most successful people in the world, they accept responsibility. And, and, and you, what, what, what were you talking about in the meeting? I don't even remember. But you said it was, my, it was your fault and that it was up to you. And it was like, what, what, what were you talking about? Well, it's because at the beginning, it's very easy. to. And I used to have a, a, one of my first bosses in corporate America. She was also a kid of immigrants. And she was telling me, you know, I was lucky that I was born in America, you know. And you only can make it in America if you really, really, really take 
you know, the bull by the horns, and then you, you, you action, you take action on it, you know? So I thought about it, and, and I think that you and I, we follow the same people, you know, Gary, Grant, you know, everybody else. So then I, I heard Gary one time saying, you know, the day that you realize that everything is your fault, your life will change. Mm. And I was like, oh, why he means like that? And then- I'm I, getting chills, because that's so good. Yeah. It's so good. And, and then I realized- Pay attention to this, guys. I'm telling you, this is cold. And then I realized, you know, the fact that I didn't sell one policy right now is my fault. Mm. The fact that I didn't uh, push hard enough is my fault. The fact that the customer left me and he went somewhere else is because I didn't provide something that they were needed. Mm. So it's my fault. The fact that an employee left me, that means that it's my fault. Yes. Everything is my fault because this is my company. So the one that is running the ship is me, right? Yes. So at the end of the day, it's everything my fault. So I have to put systems in place, right? I think that that's what you were driving to, right? Yes. I have to put systems in place so then I don't get surprised by the consequence of situations. Correct. So I put myself always in a situation that this can be very bad. And I think that you are also in that land that, you know, this can go very bad, right? So if it goes very bad, what is going to be my exit escape from this? So if I know that I have, I don't know, a hundred clients or already past a thousand, I can lose half of them tomorrow. So then what I'm going to do to avoid that? Because something can happen tomorrow. I mean, COVID happened. Right. And I had right. customers that they died from COVID, oh you know, goodness. and that, that's exactly. horrible. Yeah, that's horrible. Beautiful. But that's sadly in the business that we're in. We're in life insurance business. People die. You know, we are in the Medicare business. Older people die, they sick, you know, yeah. more and they get sick more often than younger people. And and sadly, you know, this happened and it's horrible that we are going through this process right now. But but, you know, it might happen that somebody might lose probably half of their business. Right. And what are they going to do about it? A lot of it? people did. I mean, there was a company um, in Springfield. We went, we went and looked at their space because we thought about it was taking it over. It was a marketing company. Mm. And at the beginning of COVID, they lost, I think, $2 billion. Ouch. And they had to lay a bunch of people off because they lost a lot of their clients. And, wow. uh, it was, and, and so we had, at early COVID, we were actually touring their space to see if we wanted to move our entire operation there. It wasn't big enough. Um, but... It was crazy. But that to goes hear. to the point that see, it's better. It pays to yeah. be bigger, you yes. know, and and yes. and take responsibility. And I think that at the end of the day, that's what the impressive part is. Sorry to interrupt, but that's the impressive part. I love that you're saying that because literally, I'm I'm walking through that and I'm hearing about how they lost two billion dollars, and I'm like, I don't want to be in a position to where I could actually lose two billion dollars. <laughs> Sure. Truthfully, like yeah. that's the message. Yeah. I love that you said that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a nice problem to have. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Because think about it. If you only make a hundred thousand, that that's I think the average Medicare agent that they make a hundred thousand dollars a that. year. Not even you that. know, uh, like fifty or sixty. Yeah. If you lose half of your practice, what is that? You lost fifty thousand dollars. How you can believe in America? Exactly. With, then you can't. Then you got to move to Springfield because everything's so cheap here. But yeah. then it's not only about you. Then it's about your family, your livelihood, your friends, yeah. your family, whoever else you help. You know, it's That's not right. only about you. Mm -hmm. So it's about not being selfish. You yes. know, and then. Do you believe? Because now that you said the word selfish, I want to ask a question. I've been thinking about something over here. Do you believe that if someone has the ability to expand and grow outside of them, mm -hmm. and they have the ability to add people, mm -hmm. and they don't? Are they selfish? Yes, they are. They should. They should. They should expand because it's their responsibility with their community too. Mm. You know, like me being bilingual and being able to see so many people that they don't understand the language yep. and they don't even know how Medicare works. They don't even know how Social Security works. I take it as my responsibility. I made it. You believe everything's your responsibility, which is why I love you. Yeah. <laughs> well, but it, I made it. You know what I mean? Like for many people say, oh, look at Tatiana. Tatiana came. She wasn't even born here, right? Because That's I wasn't right. born here. And then I came speaking English. I mean, my English is still broken, but it was more broken at that time. How much money did you make in Peru? Oh, forget about it. Mm, in American dollars, probably $8,000 a year. So from $8,000 a year to over half a million dollars a year. Yes. That's, that's, that's freaking amazing. That's the American dream. Yeah. That's what I take responsibility for it because see, right. many people are still over there or even here. I'm surprised when I meet agents here 
that they are working for a company, mm. that they provide leads or something, yep. and they are asked to write four policies a month. I exactly. was like, a, a month? <laughs> I write that in a day. I mean, I was yeah. like, a, how you can live with four policies a month? You can't. It's just they are crippling or you already because they are thinking, they're making you think that four policies a month is a good ratio. Yeah, exactly. And that's below mediocre. It's, it's, it's bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You, if you were to be outside in the street, there's so many opportunities here. You're going to tell me that you only can sell one policy a week? Exactly. I used to have a boss that she used to tell me you have to pay your right to be here. Mm. Like she, she gave us a salary, obviously. And um, we used to sit there. Her name is Yvette Ledespa. She watched this video ever. I love her. We are still friends. That's she awesome. used to be my boss. Uh, but but I consider her one of my mentors, mm -hmm. you know, because she showed me something very important, how to be a woman in business in a man world and how to show by actions mm -hmm. what you can do. Because it's very easy see, for a man to say, oh, she's just a woman, you know, maybe she cannot do it or she's being emotional or sure. whatever. Right. Um, but, but she showed me if you work hard, yeah. nobody will outwork you and you will be on top, you know? Mm. And, and, and people always remember the first person. They don't remember the second or the third or the That's fourth. Right. You know, so I'm one of those people that like to look at the board and they see my name on the first. And when I see my name on the first, I feel good, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but she showed me that you have to work for what you want and then you have to be on top. And she used to say, well, if you, I give you a salary. At that time, I think it was like 55000 or something like that. And she used to give me commission. I said, but think about it, 55000 that cost me like around good, I don't know, maybe five, $6,000 a, a month. Mm -hmm. And then if you divide that by four weeks, it's like a thousand something. If you divide yeah. it by five days that you're working here, then that means that you're costing me $200 a day. Mm. So what you're going to do to make up to that money? Because I have to find value in you. That's Otherwise, good. you're going to be out, right? That's good. And, I, and that made me think, I was like, okay, she's paying for me $200. And she used to say all the time, well, you have to make more than $200 a day in sales. That's right. In order for you It'd to justify. Profitable. In order for me to make it, in order for me to pay you. Yes. Because you don't want me to tell you I don't have enough money to pay you right. because you didn't make enough sales. Mm. I depend on yourself to pay your salary because nobody gave me a salary, right? right? And I was like, you know what? She's right. That's right. And, and, and that... All those things, I mean, all those mentors that I have along the way, I'd be very lucky to meet excellent people um, awesome. and to go to events and to have the um, open mind to yes. go to events. Many people ask me why you go to, uh, somebody asked me the other day, why you go to so many events? Oh my gosh, events have changed my life. I don't care what anybody says, events have changed my life. I would have paid double that money in a Easy. heartbeat. Easy. The people that I have met through the events. Yes, and you'll be at eight percent. I I'd be at eight percent. Yes, I already bought my ticket. You're probably front row. I'm guessing. I, we'll I, see. I, I uh, bought the package with Mali. Malia. Malia gave oh, us a Malia. group ticket. Malia yeah. Rogers. Yes. yes, I love Malia. She's yeah, awesome. I love Malia too. She's so great. she's the one that said, you know, oh, we're gonna go in a group. So she got the deal with Andy. I think that yeah. it was. That's right. Uh, so we already bought the ticket. I bought the ticket the, as soon as you finish the other eight percent. So, Virtual. Good. Yeah. Good. We already finished that. Yeah. Here's something I've been thinking about. Um, you're going to be here the rest of the week. Yes. The business expansion the business workshop yes. starts Wednesday night yes. and Friday and Saturday. And yes. Thursday and Friday. Yes. What are you most looking forward to from that event? And why that event for you right now? Just the name itself, you know? I wanted to expand, you know? So when I met you, you, you promoted that event. And that was exactly what I was looking for. I was looking yeah. how... I think that it's very difficult for a solopreneur like me that has been doing this for five years yes. all along with our team. It takes some time to understand that, you know, I cannot do it alone right. and that I need a team and I need support. And how can I merge all those personalities together? I think that that's the biggest fear. You know, what happens yeah. if, you know, I don't like that person and I already hired them or, but that can happen anyhow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I think that if, if I have the guidance, you know, that you're going to provide, right. I will have like a plan, you know, like a, 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 a road, if you want to call right. it. A roadmap. Yeah, 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 roadmap that, that is going to tell me, okay, that, you, know, you should go this way, you know, and then let's figure it out, you know, if this way works for you. Yes. And, and, and that's what I'm looking for, you know, to, and that's what I thought that that event was, was worth it. And, and, and the fact that you just meet such a group of amazing people, you know, I went to your mastermind too, 
And I remember when you announced it last minute and, and, and I asked people if they were going to go and some people were saying, look, oh, I don't know. And I said, but it's a mastermind. You don't yeah. understand. It's a small group of people. That's right. So if you want to get close to Cody, if you want to meet people that they are really willing to put money in what is meaning for them the most yes. important thing that is their business, right? right? I want to be in that room. You know, right. I, I don't want to be in a room when people are going to be making less money than me. I want people that they make more money than me. Totally. That's you know? what woke me up. I went to I went to, to Grant's conference back in 2018. Mm -hmm. First one I went to. I thought I was hot stuff. <laughs> and I go there and all of these people are just destroying me. Oh, yeah. And I'm very competitive and driven. So I'm like, gosh dang it, what is wrong with me? I, I mean, at that point, um, we we were we had we were on pace. We were going to do over seven figures in 2018, but all these people are earning like 20 million bucks. I know. And, and, and Isn't that crazy? 50. I mean, I'm, I'm. I mean, one of the things I write down now every day when you talked about um, dri oh, I do that driving too. people. I, I do that too. I write my goals. Every I write. Day. Um, I write that our total revenue is over 100 million dollars a year. Wow. Great. And it's like, why not? Yeah. Right? Why not? And even if you come short, you wouldn't like to have, you know, $70 million exactly. in revenue. Hey. I love that you say that because most people are like, well, you fell. I'm like, no. you make $70 million bucks. Yeah. I really fell. You tell me. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's one thing I want to add real quick. we got a couple more minutes. Sure. Um, what steps are you going to take to get from half a million to a million? Well, definitely more people. You know, uh, I just, we, we just started with Dallas, you know, that works with your dad. Um, and we just hired somebody in Texas, another person in Florida with 80 people team, which that was like a, huge. a grand slam for me. Boom. Uh, yeah, boom. I was like, how many people do you have? 80? A big boom. Yeah. I was like, oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then we have another firecracker, Lamy, that you're going to meet her. Her name is Senia. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming for next week because oh. your dad is making another event after you. That oh, it should uh, be the same. I mean, I know uh, we should have staggered him. Now you get to come back in two weeks, right? Yeah. Are you coming back for the main event? I can't but because you're, the other agent is. Yes, okay. the other okay. agent okay. is. But that's what I was telling you guys that I wish it would be. There's you know, all these events in Springfield. And you're like, I'm in Jersey. How often can I really come? That's to my point. You know what I mean? So I was like, Oh my God! Don't tell me that you're gonna make it like two weeks from there. My husband is yeah. gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> If I disappear for half you of the need month. You a house here. <laughs> that's, what just I, move. that's what I have to do, right? Yes, I'm thinking. thinking. That half million bucks would go a lot further. In I know, I know, I know, I know. So they, I, I, I'm, I'm going to. You could probably be the mayor of the city and, and, and own the Oh, the, I definitely will know tower. people. Oh, I definitely will, will see me meeting people in, in whatever, you know. Uh, so I'm, I already hired somebody in, in two people in Florida, like two teams in Florida, then mm. somebody in California, somebody in Texas. So um, I'm actually was making a joke with Dallas that I'm going to go to the bar and maybe I will hire somebody there, you know. You probably would. Yes, just, you She's know. Look <laughs> She's a machine. I'm looking. Yes, I'm looking. Everywhere that I go, I go and look for it. But but the goal for me is 20 people before the end of the year. To And I think that that will be a solid number yep. to start. That's you right. know, um, The goal is obviously over 100 people. But, but, yep. but you know, to start, I think that 20 people solid before the end of the year, oh. it will it will propel me fast, farther than a million dollars. Yes. I already did my calculations and should it. If there's an agent out there that is struggling and their back's against the wall. They feel like they, they, they're they making 50 grand a year. Wow. And they're like, man, I'm struggling. I don't know what to do. I'm not Tatiana yet. <laughs> How do they become Tatiana? What, what, what advice would you give to them? Don't give up. That's what I would mm. say. Don't give up. Many people think that this industry is about just picking up the phone, calling, and then somebody say, yes, I want to buy insurance. Yes. That doesn't happen. No. I mean, I never met somebody, but if you met somebody like that, please let me know. Yeah, I want to meet that person. Me uh, but I never met somebody that says, Tatiana, every time that I call somebody in the first phone call, they pick up. And they say, please sell and me. And they say, please sell me. That, that I, I haven't met. And if somebody tells me that, then that's a problem because they say, what the hell is wrong with that person? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. might have some illness or something. That's what yeah, they want me to exactly. sell them, you know? Uh, but I would say, don't give up. And I would say, it's easier than it looks if you really pay attention to every move you make. Like, so I, I, I will tell you a quick story. Uh, I went to the supermarket and I, I saw a Hispanic lady. Uh, she needed help. You know, I, I talked to her briefly and I said, you know, by the way, how old are you? And she said, 62, 63. And I said, this is my card. If you ever need me, call me. Can you believe that a lady saved that car for three years? Wow. 
She must have liked you. Well, but it's because we make a connection. That's right. You know what I mean? It was it was in a in 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 a non plan you know way. Yeah. I was looking for something in a supermarket that it wasn't even my area. The lady was looking for something. I helped her because she didn't yeah. know how to read English. I said, "Oh, this is right here. This is what you're looking for. Oh, you look like my daughter." And we just made a small little chit chat for awesome. what, like five seven minutes maybe. Yes. And I gave her my time. Most people don't have the courage to do that. You seem to have the courage to ask anyone, anything, anytime. You're very likable, very outgoing, super driven, but you're also really good at connecting with people. But I think that that can be learned, to be honest with you. I don't think that, I think that that's a craft that you start developing with time. I don't think that you are born. I mean, I mean there's some lucky people that they're born with it. Uh, but I think that the more, it's like a, it's like exercise. Like you, when you were saying about your triathlon, right? Yes. Probably yes. at the beginning you were thinking, oh my God, how I'm going to do this. You That's know right. what I mean? This looks like a mountain task. I'm never going to mm. be able to train for this. But you don't need to do it all at once. That's true. Right? That's right. You only need to run half a mile today, then a mile later, then yeah. a mile and a half. But the moment that you realize you're in 10 miles, one shot, mm. you know, so you turn around, you look, oh, yeah, last like, year. I did it. Yeah, last year I was only running half a mile. Yeah. So it's like a muscle. If you start, you know, looking for opportunities at the beginning when, when I became from coming from corporate and then being independent and not having that salary, yeah. you know, I, I was making a big salary in Wall Street. I was making $150,000 your salary. Most people would think that's pretty good. I'm, 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 I'm complacent, right? That's pretty good. That's what I was saying in the meeting too. It's so easy to get complacent because yes. you, you get to a point that, okay, I'm making good money. I have a nice car. I have a nice apartment. At the time, I was an apartment in New York City. I have a nice apartment. But at what point is enough, you know? Right. Uh, and 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 when I was removed that salary, when I was removed that comfort blanket, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, how am I going to get clients now? Because I need, That's right. I need 40 clients a month, you mm. know? How am I going to do that? How do you do that? And, and I start realizing that you have to ask every single person. So good. Like everywhere you go, if you go to the same laundromat, go and ask the laundromat lady, this is me, this is what I do. If you know somebody that needs my help, there you go. That's awesome. You know, give it to everybody like a hot menu, That's you right. know? Courage. Yeah. And, Courage. And, and think about it. The worst thing that can happen is they want to say, oh, I'm good. Okay, That's take right. my car. Doesn't matter. That's take right. my car. Put it there. Oh, can I put it here? I used to go to um, restaurants and I used to put, you've never seen those billboards that they yes. put the yes. cards? I used to put three or four Cork, cards. Corkboard or whatever. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I used to put like three or four cards there, you know. You have problems with, med- with small little notes. You have problems with Medicare, call me. You're you know? extremely persistent too. And I'm persistent. Um, yes. I don't give up. Very persistent. Until they tell me shut up or don't call me anymore and that's it. And I have those. Yeah. You guys got to get like that. They got to get like Tatiana. <laughs> she does not give up. Okay. L- last question. What does 8% <sighs> mean to you? 8% means the people that really make it. You know what I mean? We are sadly not that many. I have worked in many, many corporations, and I see many people. I used to hire people for a corporation too, so I hire many people, and it irks me. You know, I mean, mm. I, you have no idea how, how many people now call me sometimes for a job because they see now what I post online yes. and stuff like that. And uh, recently, I had a guy that he said, and, and he is my age. I don't think that I'm old. I'm 44, no, no, uh, no. but I don't think that I'm old, right? You're similar age to Dallas, actually. Yes, 43. I think that Dallas is 43 or something like that, right? Yeah. But I don't, I don't consider. My myself old or finished or I mean I, I think that I'm just starting you know right. um, but I have this guy calling me he's 45 he just got fired from his job in corporate America because mm-hmm. of COVID in New York City and he calls me he says I, I was wondering if, if you know somebody can give me a job that I can make a hundred thousand dollars a year and I just want to take it easy and I was like oh, I'm not the person that I can recommend you that kind of job I'm sorry not take it easy no, but why you want to take it easy? That's my, that's kind of my point here. Why? Yeah, that's a really good question. What? I don't think people really deep down want to take it easy. I think it's just the the easy way out is to just be like. But why? Because I used to tell myself like, if I can just make five thousand dollars a week, this is years ago. If I can just make five thousand dollars a week, I'll be set for life. But, and when then I got to five thousand, I'm like. But see, at least you realize. Yeah. That you yeah. wanted more, but this guy was already making a hundred and a hundred and something thousand dollars a year, and he wants to go to another job. 
Making and make a hundred and something thousand dollars a year yeah. and just be there. And this is a 45 year old man that probably has a family. Exactly. Right? Maybe yes. he has kids that are 15 or like like Dallas, yes. right? 14, 15 years old that's as right. the average. That's right. So then soon they're going to go to college. If they want to go to college, right? You don't want to take that away from your family. Mm. I mean, you don't want your kid to ask you for something that you cannot provide. You are the parent. That's right. It's your responsibility. Give them the opportunity that your parents gave you. So if your parents gave you for college, gave you money for college, or gave yes. you the possibility to go to college, the least that you can do for your kids is giving the same opportunity that you were provided. Absolutely. When you were in that place. Have to. So why are you going to settle for so little? That's Show some that. respect to your family, to yourself. You know, and and I told him, I, I felt bad for him because I was like, listen, but I'm not a person I wouldn't want to recommend you. Yes. How I can recommend to my network mm. somebody that is telling me I, I want to take, take it easy. easy. Mm. Don't right? do that. How that looks as a, my reflection. Yeah, not good. No. I've hired too many people that are close to me that come here and just want to take it easy. And, and I'm like, I'm done. I was like, a no. I'm sorry, yeah. but no. It's unacceptable that you are that age. 100%. Are thinking like that. You have what? Probably 15, 20 years to retire. And probably you don't even have a 401k or nothing that mm. you can show for your life. I mean, That's what right. do you have now that it can be a legacy? Right. He didn't have no answer. I said, don't call me for BS. I'm sorry. You <laughs> know, I, I'm not a person. And then some people label me, me label me as too rough. But I don't think that I'm rough. I, I, I just think Honest. that... Yeah, I think that sometimes honesty can be taking us rough. Oh, totally. Uh, but I don't think that it's totally. rough to be to be truthful. You totally. know, I, I don't want to be average. Do you want to be average? No. No. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this. That's right. You follow me? You, you're you're going to leave a legacy too. You're going to build something special. We have to. You know, it. you guys can build it too, can't you? I yeah, can I have to. It's it. my from, responsibility. From Peru. Yes. To millionaire. Yes. That's the book. Yeah, that, that's a story. And that, you and I were gonna, story. you and I were gonna make millions with the agency things. Remember? That's right. That's right. Yes. Okay. I'm still waiting for your call. I love it. I'm sitting here, here you know. Go. Okay. She's right. Waiting, She's wait, close. Wait, waiting, waiting, waiting for Cody to send me a text that they're already ready to buy this. That's you know? right. That's right. I See, forgot about that. you forgot yeah. about it already. I, See, I, I've got a lot of ideas too. I know, but yeah. I don't forget about anything. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I, I have you on a speed dial. You know. Boom. Yeah, Cody. She's incredible. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Cody. I love it. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, your expertise. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I love it. Go get grateful. it like Tatiana, okay? You don't have any excuses. Accept responsibility. Yes. And get after it. Yes. And take, take responsibility, yes. Everything is your fault. And, and just a small thing. Some people okay. say Tatiana is bilingual. That's why she's so successful. Oh, my gosh. And I think that that's just a BS excuse. I'm sorry. No. Everyone has the same opportunity. I was going to say yes. You know, everybody, Whether they believe it or not. They do. There is a lot of people in the U.S. It's 10,000. Now I think that we're to 12,000 people, right? 12,000 people turning 65 every day. You are going to tell me that people think that there is not enough people. This is the only business that I know that for the next 10 years, the number is going to keep increasing and we're not going to have lack customers. I mean, 360,000 a month. I know. People turning 65. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. And they all can be rich through the phone. That's right. Or through mail or in person or knocking doors. All of them work. Some people ask me, what works? Everything yeah. works. Do everything. That's right. Do it all. Do it all. We can all make money like Tatiana. Okay. Thank you. Thank I want to make more money. This. Thank you. I love yes. it. Okay. No, thank you, Cody. Go do it. Thank be, you. be Tatiana. I want you in the hot seat. Okay. Thanks for <laughs> yes. Watching. Thank you. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Who heard when we first started today that the best people in the world have a coach? Was that Bill Gates earlier that said everybody should have a coach? That's ridiculous. That's amazing. That's crazy. Ridiculous in a good way. <laughs>